Today's video is on equilibrium calculations. So today let's work on uh, calculating equilibrium systems using ice tables. In this first problem, we're just going to calculate the KQ or the KC for this system. Notice we read the expression, use square brackets to indicate concentration uh, in units of mole per liter. And here we have the actual values uh, from the problem, and we can solve and get the KQ or the KC for this system. Notice the round brackets are the values and the square brackets suggest concentrations. So in this problem, we'll take the equilibrium concentrations of two things we know and try and find out uh, the concentration of something that we don't know. It's using the same system as before. So here we'll just write down the KQ, it's the ammonia concentration squared, divided by the nitrogen concentration and the hydrogen concentration cubed. And we're going to try and solve this for the ammonia concentration as was given in the problem. So here we have just a little bit of algebra to get the uh, solution for the ammonia concentration separate. We'll put in the values for the KQ, nitrogen uh, gas concentration, and hydrogen gas concentration. Be sure to cube that hydrogen gas concentration. And we can work out here using our calculator. Just press in all the values as you see them. And you can get uh, this uh, solution here, 0 0.0389, etc molar. Remember there's just two sig figs in this question, so we'll call that 3.9 by 10 to minus 2 or 0 0.039 molar at equilibrium for the ammonia. So we can also use these expressions to predict what will happen in the future in an equilibrium system if we start from one uh, condition and see what happens. So for instance, in the same reaction as above, remember that's the nitrogen and hydrogen making ammonia back and forth reaction, the so-called Haber process. We start off with, in this case, two moles of ammonia in a two liter container. And uh, the question we have is what will the concentrations be of all the constituents once the reaction reaches equilibrium? So there's the question. I'm trying to find uh, what's going to happen uh, in the future. So in order to do that, we have to introduce uh, the very valuable and important analytical tool we call the ice table. And uh, to do that, we'll start with a balanced chemical reaction. Uh, you've seen this one a few times already uh, in this video, but there it is, nitrogen and the three hydrogens making the two ammonia back and forth. We'll have the initial concentrations, the concentration changes as we shift towards equilibrium, and then finally the equilibrium concentrations. So ice is initial change and equilibrium. Remember the initial concentration plus the changes will be the equilibrium ones. We'll put in the initial concentrations here. We don't know what uh, the system will do, but we know it's going to gain some nitrogen, gain three times as much hydrogen, and lose twice as much ammonia. And here in the equilibrium line at the bottom, we'll just add the initial plus the changes. So then go to the KEQ expression, write it down. That's one we knew before, also 3.8 by 10 to, the minus, 10 to the 4, I'm sorry. And then substitute those values in there. So we'll put in for the ammonia the 1.0 minus 2x, and the x and 3x for the hydrogen and nitrogen, respectively. So this expression here uh, can be solved in a couple different ways. The first is algebraic and the second is numerical. First, let's uh, see about an algebraic solution for this uh, problem. You may look at it and not be too happy to see x to the fourth power and so there. Let's just get this all uh, nicely arranged. And uh, actually you're quite lucky if you look closely and be able to take a square root on both sides of this. There's a square and a fourth power. So now if you take a square root on each side, this root of kq equal these guys over here, and uh, this is now quadratic. Uh, it doesn't look quadratic, but if you look closely, you'll see it is in fact a quadratic equation. So I'll just multiply around here to get this into a uh, quadratic form with a bit of algebra. And you can see this is A, there's B and C, and we can uh, use the quadratic formula that will work. Or if you like, you can use software that contains the quadratic formula in it. Here I'm using Quadrami and we'll just put in the values for A, B, and C respectively. Remember, a software like this is just the same as doing the quadratic formula by hand. So here we have two values for uh, the X value, or the change in equilibrium concentration, and you might wonder, which value should I choose? Well, here we're going to choose the positive value. Okay, the positive root is the one that's going to give us uh, useful, meaningful, positive concentrations and uh, that's also the way we set up the equation, so that's the way it's going to work out. Remember, you can't have negative concentrations uh, for any of these uh, constituents at equilibrium. So the uh, only thing to do now is get the values that we just uh, got for our uh, equilibrium change variable x and put that back into our ice table. So here's the ice table, there's our x value, 
And we'll just substitute those values into that bottom line, the equilibrium concentration line, and uh, compute these numbers here, 0 0.030, 0 0.090, and 0 0.94 molar, or the concentrations. So to solve the problem numerically, we're going to graph each side of the equation, uh, y1 and y2 here, and we'll determine the value of x that makes them equal. So uh, we'll graph the reaction quotient q against our equilibrium shift variable x, and also graph kq's constant value, and we'll see where the kq and uh, q values meet. So here we're going to have q and kq on the left, we'll have our x, our equilibrium shift variable down there, a constant value of kq, and we'll see that the reaction quotient q changes with x. See where they meet, and uh, that'll be it. We'll be look for our equilibrium value. So the question is how to set the minimum and maximum values. Well, the kq, we've got this value here, it's a, uh, expression from above. You notice that uh, x there must be less than 0 0.5, because we need this value to be positive. Uh, 1 minus 2x must be a positive number. So x can be no bigger than 0.5. And the maximum reaction quotient here should be above kq because we want to see uh, where the intersection point lies. So I'll choose 4 by 10 to the 4 there. Uh, that's going to work. Anyway, here let's use our TI-84 calculator or similar to uh, help us do it. That's actually pretty easy once you uh, have an idea of how to do it. We'll put in y1 and y2 into y1 and 2. Here we'll set our window, uh, 0, x max will be 0 0.5 and y max 40,000 graph. You can see the blue value is the kq and red is our reaction quotient. And here we can just uh, do calculate. We'll go down and calculate an intersect here. Press enter, y1, enter, enter, enter for a guess. And you'll see we get this value here um, of 0 0.030 for our x value. Let's just recap. There's the three windows, with kq and q, y1 and 2. q and kq are set on y min and max. And the equilibrium shift variable x is set on x min and max. There's a kq and the q values. You can see the intersection point where the q is equal to kq at equilibrium. So that's the value of x we need to get to equilibrium. And we'll just do calc intersect, um, select the two curves and make a guess and get the intersection value x down here, 0 0.03044, etc. So this strategy can be used on any system. So it really opens our scope to solve uh, complex equilibrium problems uh, quite easily. Remember, don't forget to go back to the ice table uh, with this value for x to get the final equilibrium concentrations. So here's our ice table. There's our value of x from above. And we'll put that number down into the equilibrium line at the end and get those concentrations. Hey, surprise, surprise, they're the same as the ones we got from the algebraic solution earlier. Now, you might think, well, how special is that? Why'd you bother go through all this numerical thing when you could get a, can you could get it algebraically? And you would be right to think that. Okay, so clearly there was no need to do it both ways. And uh, I think that the goal um, here, obviously the algebraic and numerical solutions wound up being the same, but the message is this. And uh, if you can see a simple algebraic solution, then I would say, great, go for it. And if not, uh, these numerical methods uh, work too, and they allow you to get after quite a bit more complex problems. So learn it simple, and uh, you can try it on hard problems. So thanks for sticking around. It's maybe a little technical lesson. But uh, this technique may come in uh, very handy for you. Anyway, see you soon, and thanks very much. Please watch the two next videos, and stay tuned for our next lesson, Lesson 11, Beer's Law. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.